David, can you elaborate on how we protect the air quality for our embryos? Well, one of the, the most obvious things is when patients walk into the front door of the clinic, we've got signs that say this is a sen sensitive environment. I think somebody might walk in the front door and think that we don't like perfume. <laughs> but we, we like uh, nice smelling things as much as anybody else. But um, what the patients need to understand is that our embryos don't necessarily like those things as well. Um, these things that we can smell are what we call aromatic hydrocarbons. They're, are, they're things our noses can detect. And if they can get to our noses through the air, they can get to the embryos in the, in the air. And honestly, what we've learned is that in the parts per billion level, that these things can harm the embryos. And so we're trying very hard to protect that space. Um, can you give us some examples of other things we do in the lab to protect that space? Well, our patients sometimes notice that we have big barometers outside the doors to our um, procedure rooms. And the reason for that is that we're going to be pushing air always out of the lab so that when you open that door, you feel the pressure of trying to get into that space because it's trying to blow any um, less than pure air out of that space. That lab space, the procedure room space, has its own air handler with its own filtration system. And so um, that is maintaining the purity of the air. And when you actually get into the lab environment, we're, we are controlling temperature, we're controlling humidity, and we're very picky about the fluids that we pick to culture our egg, sperm, and embryos in because those conditions, the nutrients that are in the fluid drops that are around the embryos while they're being cultured in the incubator are very important. And so I think all of these layers of protection do our best job of mimicking what it, the environment that the embryo would be in if the embryo were in the fallopian tube.